All right, guys, I'm gonna try to do a live commentary for you. I got with, looks like a Scooby-Doo cleave. Yeah, we got a disc and hopefully he's sub. Yeah, he is. He's gonna just go in and sap. All right, then we're gonna just go on the warrior, it looks like. He might, we might just try and give him right here. He's probably gonna the hex, yep. And then I'm gonna CC the pallet whenever he gets close. I'm gonna trigger that in hex. Okay, he got a stack on it. Looks like right now they're gonna go on the priest, so I'm gonna throw some support to him. And then I'm gonna freedom off this on me and then sack. And then we just need to get a lot of pressure on this warrior right here. Get a wall or try and global him. And then right now it's just get some pressure going to spell the flame shock off me in case they swap. Looks like he wants to go on the I don't know who this rogue's on. He's swapping targets a lot. Swing the flame shock. Yeah, he's still on the warrior. Okay. So I'll be able to hodge the pally after that bubble. And I just gotta keep CC up. So I or keep the priest up, I mean. So I'm keeping sacred shield and heals on him. Yep, everything's looking fine. I'm not getting any procs right now, which is pretty unlikely. He's playing the flame shock, and then I am going to bop the priest on the blade storm. He really needs that. Warrior might try to break it with a shattering throw. Okay, warrior's swapping, or he's swapping to the rogue. And I'm going to sack the pally. I don't know what this rogue's doing. He's just... Okay, I'm going to stun him out of this, and then we should win. Yep, that's over. He'll die right here. And that's great. Good job. That was tough. I didn't know who the rogue was going on with solo queue. I'll try to illustrate the playstyle of both Rhett and Preg through the use of some NPCs. And in almost all the circumstances, whether it be 1v1s, arenas, or battlegrounds, you're going to want to start off with a judgment, and that'll typically be judgment of justice. And the reason you'll use a judgment is for a few reasons. One, it has a farther range. All of them have a 10 yard range. They're able to hit that far away and it also has increased crit chance. As Rhett, 18% increased. As Prague, 12% increased. So with a higher crit chance, you're more likely to get an Art of War proc. And when you get that Art of War proc, you can just throw it on an Exorcism, which has a long cooldown, so you can get some bursts going. Or maybe the battle's already been going and maybe your teammates are low or dying a little bit and you can throw on a heal to them. So also Judgment of Justice will limit their movement speed to just 100%. So commons won't be able to go stuff around pillars, escape, rogues can't sprint away. You'll be able to avoid a lot of people kiting you with the use of this judgment. And the name of the game for Prague and Rhett, but especially Prague, is you need that uptime because you get so many crits just through autos. So here, I'll just auto, not even touching the keyboard. Actually, I'm attacking pretty slow because of this ice armor, so I'll dispel it. But you're constantly getting these Art of War procs. As you can see, 14 seconds, pop one, another one, another one. So they just keep popping up. So you're gonna do a Judgment, then you're gonna probably do an Exorcism, then you're gonna do a Shield of the Righteous, and that'll free up you to cleanse like I'm doing right now. This guy, of course, is applying a ton of buffs on me because what are they doing in PvE? And you'll just be hitting them a lot. You'll be using a lot of your globals onto spells. That is very important. You're gonna pretty much always be using Bubbles onto spells as well as flash of lights as Prague. The main difference with Prague and Rhett being that Rhett will be using a few more globals on damage abilities like their Crusader Strike and Divine Storm, while Prague will be doing a lot more autos and a lot more flash of lights because of that. And naturally, they still have a shield on, so they do get Shield of Righteous, which they'll be using in place of Divine Storm and Crusader Strike. So you'll be just constantly hitting, getting the spells going and do as much damage as you can early so that you can free up your ability to do the spells and support. Because that is mostly what Prague and Rhett are good at. They need that support. They need to be able to hit their globals, whether it just be CC, whether it be dispels, whether it be heals. They need to constantly have their globals free so that they can do other things to help their teammates. All right, so I'm gonna show you your best gearing for season five for both Rhett and Prague. And I'm also gonna show you some Gearing alternatives to some of these pieces because you, just like me, most likely won't be able to get this exact list. And there are some very close alternatives that aren't too hard to get. So starting first off, we will be doing the Deadly Helmet. And what's nice about the Paladin set is it's statted perfectly. You have crit, resil, and then your main stat with stamina. And then the stat bonuses are even good. Resil, attack power, and then the four set, one second less on judgment. So with your talents and everything, you will have a seven second cooldown on your judgment for all of Wrath, which is pretty quick. And one of the reasons why you want to glyph the judgment one as well. And I'm also going to go over the gymming and enchanting a little later. But first, I want to show you the gearing for the first season because the gymming and enchanting is 
the same the entire time. And if you're neck, you're gonna get the favor of the Dragon Queen. This one's extremely good. It has armor pin, which you don't care about a ton, but having the high agility and the huge stat weights is amazing. And the PvP neck does not have a main stat on it, just attack power. So you do not benefit from your talents, such as the 15% strength with divine strength, as well as the blessing of kings, which you'll pretty much always have. That is one of the biggest reasons why the PvP neck and cape aren't very good. It doesn't have a main stat. You'll we'll be doing deadly shoulders. Then for your cape, you'll be doing Drape of the Deadly Foe. This is off KT25, the last boss. Also, this neck, it is off of... I believe you're getting the item from Saffron, the Heroic Islands, and you take that to Eye of Eternity 25 and you defeat Maligos. And that is how you get this item. And then the chest will just be deadly. The bracers will be bracers of unrelenting attack. You can easily run the PvP ones. They do have strength on them and they're also crit resil, so it's statted well. But right now, hit is sort of the issue in the first season. And you want to hit that 5%. You can't even go a little over because there's some racials that cause issues. But if you're like me, I'm going to be playing with a Draenian 2, so I will have that 1% hit bonus. So I actually won't need the 5%. I'd probably modify this list slightly to get around 4%. But once again, it's okay to be at like 6% or 7% hit in PvP. All right, and then for your weapons, we'll be running the Turning Tide. This is off KT25, man. An amazing weapon. Very few alternatives. It's one of only two 226s that you can run as Preg. This is the best one. The other one is also off of KT. It's called the Torch of Holy Fire, but it does have MP5, I believe haste, and you'd much rather have crit. So this one's just better. But if you can't get it, that's the next best thing. And besides those, there's also some 213s and of course the 213 PvP weapon, which will be your next best bet. And then Wall of Terror, this is once again off KT. He just drops the chase pieces for All of Wrath. By All of Wrath, I mean the first season. And you'll run Titanium Plating. This reduces Disarm Duration, which doesn't matter. We have the talent, but it gives you a lot of block value and that will help your Shield of Righteousness damage as well as your blocking, of course. Now, the next best alternatives for this are the PvP one, but for Prague and Pret, you really want to have a block value one. So this one is definitely the best by a good margin. And then for your Libra, you run this one, which is Spell Power for Flash of Light. You're spamming Flash of Light as Preg. You can also run a few others that will give you block value if you're just against melee, but I would much rather go with this. And then I think that's called Libra of Obstruction. And other than this, there can be some that will give you some attack power or strength, but I think this one's really good. And you can run this for Preg and Ret for all of Wrath. And it eventually caps out at about 510 spell power, I think, something like that. And then we'll run Deadly Gloves. Not really an alternative for this. The 5% damage stuff for Shade Strike doesn't matter for Preg or Pret, but it does for Ret. And then we'll run Deadly Belt. And then we're gonna run Belabored Leg Plates. This is from Obsidian Sanctum, 10 man, two Drake hard mode, I believe. So it's not even the hardest hard mode, which isn't that hard in the first place, but these are very good, perfectly statted. The PvP ones are also very good. So if you don't need to hit on these or you can't get them, run the PvP ones. And then the boots are bladed steel boots. These are also crit hit pieces. There's no sockets on them, which is unfortunate, but once again, pretty good stats. And this is from Nax25, I believe. And you can also get the PvP ones. Not a ton of options here. And then for the rings, this one's really nice. This is off Maligos25. It is a BOE. Perfect statting, agility, hit, crit, attack power, just amazing. Definitely get one of these. It is unique equipped though, so you can't have two. And then for your other ring, you have a lot of options here, but Ruthlessness is great for the expertise, good statting. You can also run this one, I believe it's called like Full Handed Band or something, it's from Nax25 Man. Drops off a few bosses. And then of course you can run the PvP one, but that doesn't have Strength or Agi, which is a downside, but same item level, so it's not too much worse. And then for your Trinkets, you have a ton of options. But I highly recommend getting this one, and this is technically the easiest to get. It will be expensive, but it's a BOE, tons of Strength, 390 plus then you have your 15% talent and your 10% talent and this is like a mini death's verdict or death's choice at the very beginning of Wrath so definitely get this and if you're human you'll need another trinket otherwise it'll just be a medallion so just the Brazil one but if you're human like me you'll be doing bandits insignia which drops off sapphire in 25 but there are also some other options and a few of those are like running Fury of the Five Flights. Not the best, but you do get a lot of attack power with that and you do attack quickly so you can stack it quick. And then the other one I think is pretty good is Darkman Card Berserker. Once again, a BOE, a huge passive Brazil bonus, which is nice considering, look at all this PVE gear we have on. 
and it gives you just a lot of crit rating from attacking so very nice and i would run pretty much all of this and also for the cape you can run the pvp one and then there are some 213s that are available as well and then there is also besides the honor neck there is a 213 from inside nax and i believe it's called I wanted to show you just how much armor hp and everything you're working with at the beginning so this is once again missing the 16 resil from the belt buckle but with that we have 730 resil and by the end of wrath with like bisque gearing for a prague you're around 1100 ish resil so that's where you're starting off at and then your armor is pretty high 22 percent that's a 57 percent reduction and people have very low armor pin early on so you have a ton of physical mitigation and of course you have the block and then all the other defenses that come with being a pally as well as the talents that like righteous fury have a six percent mitigation and then for ret the gearing is basically the same for the first season the only difference is that you'll be running a two-hander of course and the best one is going to be the betrayer of humanity off of kt25 this one has agility on which is extra nice its weapon speed is not the best and haste don't really care about but haste is okay when you have that much agility and damage and then besides that the other alternatives is going to be death's bite that is off of kt10 man not too much worse it's still very good it's got crit hit this will help some hit issues so maybe you could drop one of the hit pieces elsewhere and then run an easier to get pvp piece more resil too and then the other option is going to be just running the deadly weapon there is no 226 it's just 213 unless they do change it however the downside with this is it doesn't have agility or strength it has attack power so you won't be getting the 15% and 10% buffs as a paladin, but it does have a good weapon speed. So this is nonetheless a very good alternative. And then also as Rhett, you will have to have a one-hander and shield, but they're a little different than the Prague setup as well as Pret. You will want to run the PvP one ideally because you actually want the resilience in this situation. You don't need the block value. So you can run this one and also the other deadly one because they're basically the same price. So with the other deadly ones called the shield wall, it's stamina resil. So you can have that. They're very cheap and you can also have this one this will be more healing also more crit and then i like to throw a resilient chain on this instead of the titanium plating because it's just more survival and you don't need the block value because you're not spamming shield of righteousness because you have divine storm and crusader strike as well and if you're a weapon you'll be using turning tide and instead of berserking enchant you'll be using the spell power one because as right you're just swapping the full healer mode versus preg's kind of a permanent mix and Besides the turning tie, which is hard to get, you can get the Torch of Holy Fire, but I do think the deadly one's actually much better for this than as Prague because you're not doing as much damage focus because you don't have Reckoning. And also the deadly one is faster. It's a 1.6 speed. And this is a great alternative for Rhett in general. I think it might even, in a sense, be better than the turning tide because it does give you a lot more survival with the Resil. But nonetheless, you do get a higher stat weight with turning tide. However, this does have the faster attack speed, so more Art of War procs. This is a great option and much easier to get than the weapons off of AT. And there might not even be rating requirements on the weapons in Wrath. So we'll see, or at least in the early seasons. Okay, and then what about for your judgment? Since we do have three and they all share the same cooldown, same mana cost, I had one very observant subscriber who actually noticed that I usually am using Judgment of Justice in an earlier video. And I'll put that on screen if I can find it. And essentially, if I had to put it into a percentage, you'll be using Judgment of Justice probably about 90% of the time and then you'll be using judgment of light maybe six to seven percent of the time and then wisdom the rest not very often however it does matter if you are playing a different comp like for instance i'll be playing prague enhanced most likely a lot in wrath and that comp is actually one where you will be using judgment of wisdom a bit because your enhanced shaman has quite a few mana issues so he'll be using charm rage constantly just to get his mana back not even for the damage reduction and with Judgment of Wisdom, Elhelm will get more mana back. And then maybe he can save Sham Rage for when he's getting bursted down. And then Judgment of Light versus Judgment of Justice. You have to be using Judgment of Justice on anybody who has any sort of cooldown or ability that will constantly give them run speed. So that's things like Druids, just using Travel Form or Cat Form Dash. That's going to be your Rogues of Sprint, Prep Sprint. That's going to be your sh any Shaman with their Instant Ghost Wolf and a few other things. And then there's some classes that have a 15% passive run speed. And one of those in particular is Pret, Reg, or Ret and Preg Paladins. They all have that 15% talent. They pretty much always get this no matter what. And then DKs typically have Unholy Presence. And they have their 15% movement speed. The only ones that don't really have it, and that's where you can use Judgment of the Light, that's going to be more things like a Warrior. A Warrior doesn't really have any movement speed boosting at all. They just have the 8% from their boots and that's one where they do so much damage anyway the light can help a bit with survival it is only one percent 
healing per attack, but that's still good. And of course, you will be using Judgment of Wisdom when you are simply running out of mana because of mana burns if you're somehow getting controlled and Priest are just spamming mana burns while a Mage is polling you, slowing you, and rooting you. All right, and what are the best professions for a Prey, Gret, or Pret Paladin? Well, I think you have a few options overall, but I do think JC is kind of the best overall. I am a JCBS on my private server Paladin. I do think that is very nice as, especially later when the Epic Gems come out, you'll be able to get two extra gems in your Gloves and Bracers, which can also be strength if you don't have much PvE gear. That's nice flexibility. And then JC, of course, gives you three of the 34 Resil Gems Basically the same concept as Blacksmithing, just better the whole time in Wrath, especially at the beginning when you only have the blue gems available. But I do think these specs, and actually even Holy Pally, I think it's one of the only classes that can really benefit from tailoring in PvP. And that is because you can get the Cape Enchant, which for melee, it'll give you a 400 attack power bonus for 15 seconds, so you get a little bit of burst. And it actually got buffed to a 45 second ICD. It used to be 60 seconds for most of Wrath, and then they buffed it at some point. And we're gonna be on the final patch, so that is likely gonna be 45 second ICD, which is very good. A lot of people aren't gonna know about this. So tailoring is a great option. If you don't wanna go tailoring to pair with JC, I think Blacksmithing or NG are definitely great. Blacksmithing becoming better later once Epic Gems come in. And NG is just good in general. The Rocket Gloves, 45 second cooldown, a little bit of burst. You can use it while silenced off the global. And you wouldn't use the haste to gloves. So that's just not very good for paladins. And yeah, I would stay with those four professions. Any mix of those four, I mean, you don't have to go JC. I just think that one's so strong and you can pair it with something else. So you could even do like NG tailoring if you wanted the max first. So yeah, you got options. All right, what about macros? Well, I do think macros are extremely important for paladins in particular, maybe not holy, but definitely the other three specs. You need to be running these because if you are not, or at least most of these, because if you're not running a macro like this or these exact ones, you won't be able to support your allies quickly enough. And that's really what makes Paladins shine. Once again, it's not the burst or the damage that Paladins have. It is the utility and specifically their dispel and freedom to an extent. So one very important one, which you use the same macro for a lot of your abilities, that is the party one, two, three macros. And in this first one you see it is cleanse. So right now I have my cleanse bound to V. So if I hit V, it will just dispel me if I had anything. And then if I hit Shift V, it'll always get my party one. So if I'm in twos, Shift V will always dispel my party member. Control V will get my third. And then Alt V will get anyone I mouse over in case I'm doing like a battleground or some random thing. So you'll want to use that. You'll want to use the flash of light one. Once again, it'll just instantly flash a light. And then I have one for freedom. I have one for hand of protection. I have one for sacrifice, but on this one, it doesn't auto cast on yourself because of course you can't even cast it on yourself. Then I have a turn evil macro. This one's just a mouse over. I don't like mouse servers in general because you sometimes might miss the target or something. Like let's say you're against a DK, which is where you'll use this most of the time. They have a ghoul out and a gargoyle and somehow the gargoyle gets behind the ghoul or whatever. And then you end up fearing the ghoul pet instead of the gargoyle, and that hurts a lot. And you can lose games because gargoyle does stupid damage. And also one of the party one two threes is sacred shield. And then I also have arena one two threes for my CC. So that's going to be your hajj and your repentance. We don't have a kick, so whatever. For repentance, it's just on the right side. You'll have your arena add-on like gladius or whatever, gladi, and you will just hit, or in my case, if I hit H, it'll repent. Shift H, it'll do the arena one. Control H, arena two. Alt H, arena three. So I can very quickly, without thinking, I can just instantly hit the repent based off of my binds and where they are located within the arena one, two, three. And besides that, the only other macros I have is a start attack on exorcism. If you're hitting exorcism without the proc, it just, yeah, it just, it's kind of silly. So have a start attack there and then I just have a cancel aura with my shield of the righteous because I have two binds, so I'm constantly using the main one, but the second one, if I want to cancel aura, that's an easy way for me to just get rid of it. And this is what Gladius or Gladi will look like. So specifically, I'm showing you this in case you've already seen it because of the arena one, two, threes. I hit, let's say control H, that will instantly get the arena two target. And that is what's so nice about this. And then alt H, that'll repentance the arena three don't have to target them. I don't even have to look at them. I just have to be facing them, be in range and have them in loss. So that's kind of what that looks like. And then for the last macros, I also have a party one, two, three for holy light. You rarely use this. It's so rare. You'll only use it when you're timing something with like some sort of CC or it's just so rare. You'll almost never use holy light ever. 
the only time you'll use it the only time really is when someone is mortal striked or aim shotted or wound poison but obviously you can cleanse that and you'll be timing a holy light to go off a split second after the mortal strike effect ends that's really it and then besides that i have a divine plea macro so you could have these in two separate binds just cast divine plea and then cancel or divine plea but in my case i rarely am using this ability i will just hit it and then okay i need to start getting a heal i'm mid cast now i cancel or it before the cast goes off so i get the max heal because if you don't know what divine plea does it will actually reduce your healing by 50 percent while you have the buff and it lasts for 15 seconds and besides that i believe that is all my macros oh and then we also have just start attacks crusader strike and divine storm divine storm is important because that one does not start autoing i have started attacks on a lot of my binds sometimes when it's not even necessary but for divine storm that one is necessary since you don't start attacking and that is it for my macros and i will paste them in the description box all right so i want to show you the talents very quickly for both ret and prague and i'll also show you a 70 build you can use right now since it is pre-patched and you're probably grinding honor and you could use this while leveling if you want to do some pvp and whatever on the site it's not like you really level much slower with this build versus a pve build so right now i'm just throwing 10 protection 51 in ret and if you want to have a little more damage in this i would just take out guardian's favor and stoicism and just throw that all five into seals of the period another 15 percent damage on your Seal of the Righteousness. That is the seal you should be using unless you're getting some AoE stuff going on then maybe Seal of Command if you wanted to actually get that but we're not doing that. So this is what you can run and then Glyphs wise just run those Miners and then for the Majors you can swap one of them out for Glyph of Turn Evil since there are so many DKs but it's only good against the Holy DKs and it seems like there's a lot of everything right now so anyway that's what I would do for just 70 and then for 80 and this is what I use in Arenas, BGs, Dueling you will throw three points in improved righteous period this move is actually free so you can always be hitting this move it's good to spell protection and then six percent resil and then divine sacrifice amazing move it's the second sacrifice and this one is not dispellable and you can use it while silence absolutely amazing and then divinity just one percent more healing on you and that you do and i'll put two points in divine guardian this will make your sacred shield twice as long and increase its absorption you don't have this move yet but that move is amazing absolutely amazing it'll give you a lot of crit healing a lot of absorption dispel protection and then it'll also reduce damage taken from everybody for 20% for six seconds. Just crazy good. And then two points in improve Hajj. So it'll go from a minute to 40 seconds. And then we just have one point left, which you could throw over here in Seals of the Pier, or you could throw it in improved Diva Aura for just 2% more healing. You don't actually use Diva Aura pretty much ever, but you could get the 2% more when people are affected. So pretty much this is what I would do. You can do a lot of things. The last point is so unimportant. And then for your final glyph, you could do Glyph of Turn Evil, that is pretty useful, but if you want more damage or healing, Glyph of Flash of Light, but I would just go with Glyph of Exorcism. Unless you're having trouble with some DKs, then go with Glyph of Turn Evil. Okay, and here are the Prague talents now. You'll notice I'm not showing you a 70 version. Prague isn't even good at level 70 because the two most important talents the spec needs to actually function is Sheath of Light, you have to have this, no question, and it's Reckoning. And you can't get both of these until you're leveling into your 70s, and even if you're in your 70s, you don't get this talent until the very end, you know, the last three levels, 78 through 80. And this one gives you all damage increase with a one-hander by 10%. So not just the weapons doing more, your judgments, exorcism, everything's doing a lot more. So this build is extremely powerful. For the glyphs, I would definitely run Glyph of Seal of Vengeance. You won't be using Righteousness with this build. You will be using Vengeance the whole time. And then just Glyph of Judgment. You could also do Exorcism if you want. It doesn't matter a ton. And then I like to run Glyph of Flash of Light because you heal a ton with this build. And that's what it really does well. So I like to really improve that even more. But you could throw it into Glyph of Turn Evil if you want. Which is just an instant cast. But it does give you an 8 second cooldown. Because you're rarely casting it as melee. But you could do that if you want. And that is it for Prague. All right, so I'm going to show you the Season 8 Bist gearing setup. And before you skip this, because you're thinking, oh, we're so far away from that, we don't need it. I think it's important to know what it is for two reasons. One, to see just how much your gear improves from Bist Season 5 all the way to Bist Season 8, as well as kind of knowing just how much PvE you might be in for if you want to be optimal. So first off, I'll show you the just gearing. And there are two, there are two things in here that aren't Bist. And that is my shoulders and my boots. I didn't raid enough to get them, but... These boots should be the 284 off of Ruby Sanctum 25 Heroic, and then the shoulders would be Wrathful. But there's no point in me running the Wrathful shoulders right now without having the boots because these are giving me my hit cap. So this is actually a really easy solution if you're gearing at the end of Wrath. You're not running as much, you can easily be almost as optimal 
by just getting these BOEs and then just the Wrathful Honor ones. So besides that, I got Wrathful Helmet, I got a 284 Necklace from Ruby Sanctum Heroic 25, and these are the BOEs. This is a 277 from, I believe, uh, Rot Face or Fessor Gut off of ICC 25, and then Wrathful Chest. We have Umbrage Bands. These are Agility Haste. These are 284s from Ruby Sanctum 25 Heroic. And then we actually have the Lich King's Weapon. This is a 284, and you could easily just run the 277 PvP one, or even a lower, or any other healer weapon, really. Anything that's like this will be sufficient. And then as Preg, you will be running a Block Shield. That's very important because your Shield of the Righteousness does more damage based on your block value. And then it also just helps with all of the melee that are running around. So you'll do that and then you will run Librum of Valiance if you want damage. You will be doing a 245 Librum at the end of Wrath. I know this is much lower eye level than some of the other alternatives. Or you can also run the PvP one which will give you more spell power on your Flash of Light. Which is actually what Holy Pallies use. And then we'll be doing Wrathful Gloves, Wrathful Belt, Wrathful Legs. And then Wrathful Boots but like I said the 284s are Biss. And then for rings, a 284 from Ruby Sanctum 25. And then the rep ring, which is super nice and easy to get, just from ICC. But you don't even have to raid, you can just do the rep farms. And then trinkets, it's actually this 264 Whispering Fang Skull. It's off the second boss in ICC. So that's very easy to get. And I mean, the normal ones not too far off. And then death's verdict. Now, this is the one that they're making unique now, this time around with wraths. So you won't be able to have two death's verdicts or two death's choice on this time. But. Either one's very good. I would, I'd be using the 245 if I had it and didn't have this at the end of Wrath. So those two are very good and pretty easy to get in a way. I think the Whispering Fang skill is a lot easier to get. That's from the 10 man. So you could just raid that, get out the second boss, no problem, even get the heroic one. Death's Vertica on the other hand, it'll be a little harder to get, but it still will be from TOC and you'll hopefully have been raiding that for months prior to ICC and already have this Biss Trinket for the last phase. So that is it for the Prague gearing for S8. Okay, and then what about Biss S8 gearing for Ret Paladins? Well, luckily, Ret, Ret, and Prague all share pretty much the same gearing. The only real difference is the weapons and the Librum. So you will be running the same pieces on the right and the left side. And then as Ret, you will be running the two-hander, which the Biss at the end is the infamous Shadowmorn. You probably won't be able to get that. I probably won't be able to get that. So a nice alternative for us is to get Brintroll, which is off the first boss in ICC. You can get the heroic one very easily because once again it's just the first boss and then the other alternative is the pvp one which you unlock at 2200 arena rating which is a 277 that might be a little high rating for some people to get they might lower the ratings too we'll see i mean they did change bc and then of course the tier one which i believe was 1800 arena rating and that's a 264. there are some other alternatives as well but that is your biz gearing for the two-hander and then for your Librum, you'll probably be running the Librum of Three Truths, which gives you more strength on your Crusader Strikes and it stacks. That one is just from badges, but you can run the Spell Power one for Flashlight, which I think is kind of important because Ret's healing is so much less than Prague that I think that one's pretty important to get, and that's just from Arena Points. And then for your Shield and One-Hander, you won't be running a Block Value and Defense one. You will be running one that has either just Stamina or Zill, or you'll be running one that is spell power and crit. You can easily get those from PvP. They have a low arena point cost and even some like PvE alternatives, but you will just run those depending on what you're against. Like if you're against some melee cleave and twos that just does massive damage and trains you, you'll wanna have the high stamina and resil one on. Otherwise you'll just have the spell power and crit one on for killing your allies and yourself too. And for the weapon, you will be doing the Lich King weapon or the 277 PvP one from 22 Arena rating is in my opinion about equal. So this one isn't even technically better than the PvP one. It does just have a higher stat weight, but it does have haste over Razil. And I think Razil for the most part is better. So that is what you'll be running there. Okay, and then for gemming and enchanting for Wrath, and this is applicable for all of Wrath, not just season eight. This is S5 all the way to eight. You will be doing pretty much the same thing and the only real difference is that the gems at the beginning of wrath will be blues which will be about 20 percent worse versus the epics that i'll be showing you now so for your helmet you'll be doing a 50 attack power 20 resil enchant this is from winter's grass and then you'll be doing a 21 agi three percent increased crit damage and then for your red you'll be throwing in 10 strength 10 resil so all of your red sockets you'll be throwing in a orange which is 10 resil 10 strength and then all of your yellows you'll be throwing in a resil gem 
and then for all of your blues you'll be typically throwing in a resil gem as well or you will be throwing in one prismatic gem to get the helmet activated because that prismatic will give you the blue requirement so your shoulders will be resil and then strange resil and the enchant is also from winter's grass your cape will be an agility enchant but if you are an engineer you'll be doing the parachute because i believe it's also 22 agility correct me if i'm wrong but i think it's the exact same stat or maybe it's crit rating and then of course the parachute or if you're a tailor you'll be doing the sword guard embroidery which i actually might do tailoring this time around on my paladin and then just a resil gem and then chest is just resil enchant don't get the 10 stats or whatever resil is just a much higher weight and then we'll be doing the resil and then strength resil gem and then braces will be attack power and then i have prismatics in here but of course you just throw these in as well enchant on your weapon will be berserking but for your ret your two-hander will be berserking however the one-hander will be spell power and for your shield as preg it'll be titanium plating but as ret that could just be resil you could also do titanium plating does give you a little bit of block but i think i would do resil for the pret setup and then for your rings just throw in the resil gems and then the boots will be attack power but if you are engineering you could just throw on rocket boots you do get a little more crit from that which actually is kind of nice i probably would take that over the attack power and then just resil gem and then your pants this is kind of the weird one you could just throw in two resil gems in here since it is a red blue and just totally skip the socket bonus and you could just get the 10 all stats from your belt so you could just throw the nightmare tier in here and you would have a little more resil that way so that is a small little thing you could do but I am doing this for a little more strength and you just throw in the orange in here and then the nightmare tier and then you will be doing the resil stamina enchant and if you're a belt you'll just be doing resil gym and resil gym or the prismatic of course and then the gloves will be attack power and then just resil gems don't bother getting the blue socket here ever and besides the attack power you could get rocket gloves if you were an engineer don't do the haste that is nowhere near as good definitely do the rocket gloves okay and what about your buffs seals and auras for all your specs well, you'll be using Righteous Fury, which not only increases your threat generated by Holy Spells, which is very important in PvP, but you will be able to spam this all the time because it's free. This will protect a lot of your buffs, like Avenging Wrath, when you're trying to get your wings on as long as possible to get a burst set up, or you just have some other buffs to keep you alive from allies, keeping up your sacred shield, maybe your freedom, whatever it may be, and it also helps oom your opponents. So that is very nice. And then you will be using Kings even as prey. You'll be using Kings... Basically, it's all Paladin specs. It's very nice. You only swap the Wisdom as Holy occasionally, but you'll be using Kings, and even as Prague, you won't be doing Blessing of Sanctuary for the main reason that Blessing of Sanctuary costs a lot more mana. It's 276 mana versus Kings with the Glyph, which you'll all be using because it's the minor. It's almost a third the cost of just 105 mana. And also, you'd have to waste a talent point to get Blessing of Sanctuary. It doesn't increase your agility at all. It does give you 30% damage reduction and some mana regen, which is kind of nice, but not a big deal it gets dispelled a lot and as you can see without kings i have 45.2 then with kings i get almost one percent more crit so you get to save a talent point you get a little more crit and it costs way less mana so you'll be using kings for all paladin specs as your main one and then for your seal for prague you'll be using seal of vengeance you won't ever use anything else you can use your seal of wisdom occasionally i basically never use it but if you're against maybe like a dis priest and a frost mage they can eventually just root you poly you a lot and get some mana burns with fears and sometimes you will have to use seal of wisdom but it's happened to me more as ret that that happens because you're having to use a lot more mana with divine storm and crusader strike versus this spec uses way less mana so that is what you'll be using there and then for your auras for preg you'll have ret aura up almost all the time this actually does a ton of damage i've had i've just randomly been doing an arena and then not touch the rogue at all and then we'll just look over the rogues that have hp it's actually from ret aura it's crazy how much damage this thing will do so i'll be using this most of the time however if you're against like let's say an ellie shaman team i typically will throw on fire resist aura and then if we're against like a warlock team or even a shadow priest but usually more against warlocks because they tend to not have the spell pen cap with their gemming i will sometimes go with the shadow resist aura but once again fire can work against them too so that's really up to you. Sometimes it doesn't even matter because most of these casters will be spell pen capped. And then for ret, seals, auras, as well as buffs, it's pretty much the same as preg. The only real difference is that you'll be using seal of the righteousness over using seal of vengeance or corruption. 
You will use Seal of Wisdom rarely. That'll only be really against the Mana Burn teams. It's so rare that happens, but Red does use a little more mana because it does have Crusader Strike and Divine Storm. So you'll also use your Righteous Fury and then your Kings, which will constantly rebuff. And then you'll typically just keep up Red Aura, usually swapping to your Fire or Shadow. I almost never swap to Frost because it seems like Mages have the cap, but you can also go to Frost. Really, you'll use almost all your Auras. You can even use Crusader Aura as all these specs if you're with, like, let's say a DK and you're trying to run in really quickly. Which does happen and you're playing vanguard's cleave so like for instance on blade's edge you could run under the map and quickly get there with crusader aura also if you just notice how much crit chance i have at the end of wrath compared to the beginning with the best setup it's pretty crazy and actually the crit chance is technically even higher because on your judgments which you use all the time of course you have with my setup you have a 63 percent crit chance which is you're going to be getting art of war procs constantly with that and of course attacking really quickly so that's very important and then of course we have the reckoning talent as prey so that is kind of insane and then with that i even have a lot of brazil and then still having a ton of armor and block value i mean a 62 percent damage reduction as a melee while still having a ton of damage and healing because you also get some more passive mitigation like improved righteous fury so that's part of the reason prague so crazy i mean even if it didn't heal it would still be pretty strong even without that i would say so just a very powerful spec in general. One other small thing I forgot to mention, the main difference with Prague and Ret being that Prague is always using its one-hander and shield. It never weapon swaps ever, including swapping its one-hander. But as Ret, you do need to be swapping between a two-hander and your one-hander shield. And so to do that, you can just literally drag and drop the weapon on your bars. And that's how you can hit the bind, no macro required. And then you just have an equip slot 16, 17, or your one-hander shield so i could just very easily swap between these two i'm getting attacked okay just run around spam your judgment spam your instant flash of lights okay we're going back offensive you throw on your two-hander and then you just start attacking well thanks for watching everybody if this video was helpful to you please throw the video a like subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos and i'll see you in my next one